Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create an interactive report using Power Query. And this will be a simple report if we had a start date, an end date, and wanted to bring back some data. So, very simple table here. Have first name, last name, email, and a birth date. And this is about 500 records of data or rows. And maybe I only want to bring back certain rows based on the date here. And if I just wanted to put in a date here, start date, let's say 1119. Let's bring back something small, 1319. Press enter. Right click here, refresh. I only have three dates here, right? So let's see how we can do this. I'm going to take this data here, start anew, control A, A. Control C to copy and bring it into a new sheet. Here we are in a new sheet. I will paste the data, just paste it as values. Double click this to auto fit to see that everything is here. Turn this into a table. Control T, turn this into a table. And I won't worry about giving it a name. Let's bring this into Power Query. Go to Data and from Table and Range. And I won't need to name this anything for this demo. We can see here what Power Query has done. It's changed the types. So we have text, 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 and a date here. You can see up here in the code, that's what it's done. By default, it's done that. You can change these settings, but I'll leave it OK for this demo. We have a birth date here, which we wanted to as a date for that data type. I'm just going to set some filters here. We'll change it later on, but it'll just make it easier to edit the M code. So go under date filters between, let's make this one between uh, January 1st, 2019, and maybe January 10th, 2019. Click OK. The filters are done there. And I just need to go into advanced editor and now start the process of creating my function. Here, have some line breaks here and we're going to define some variables here. We'll start it with open parentheses start and we'll have this variable as a date and then the end date. We'll call this one end as date. So we're going to define those two as variable or as dates equal and uh, less than sign. So I can pull these in to my filter here, my start and end date filter. So we see the date has broken it out into year month and day. So we're going to have to use some M code to help pull these variables into those particular settings, right? So we're going to say date dot year. The IntelliSense is nice enough to have some choices for its pick and date dot year is the first one we're going to do. Press tab to complete that open parentheses. I'm going to pull in that start as my argument for that one that will pull in the year from that start date. Now I want to pull in the month, so I'll go here, delete that date dot month, press tab, open parentheses, start, start, and then do the same thing for the day here, the start date. Uh, date dot day, press tab, open parentheses, start. And for my end date, that filter for the end date here, we're going to do the same, but we're going to use end instead for that argument. Go to date dot year press tab, it, let it complete it for us, end, and the same thing for the month here, date dot month, m, press tab. It's, the nice thing about IntelliSense is it's pretty intuitive to pick things up, so all I need to do is just type in a couple of the words or a couple of the letters and it picked it up. And let's replace this one, date dot day, open parentheses, uh, end, and that should do it for us. Uh, select that and we have our arguments from up here where we are defining as a date start that's here for my year month day my end date argument or a variable that gets pulled in here at date that year month and day click done let's see if this works one one nineteen and then let's just do something small, 1, 3, 19. Click Invoke, and we can see it brings back those records. So I won't need this. Right click. I have my, uh, I opened up my queries pane here. I don't need this table of the Invoke function. I need that, but let's delete this. Right click, 
delete, click delete, but this one I want to save. So I'm going to click close and load and that will save it. We have our saved function. So what I can do here is maybe I don't want this to be shown. We've got 500 rows. This could be 1,000 rows, 100,000 rows. Click a new sheet, hide this sheet, right click, hide, and I'll create another table here called start, start date, end date, and let's put in some data here, 1-1-2019, one, one, press tab, 2-1-2019, uh, turn this into a table, go to insert, table, click OK, and bring this into Power Query, go to data from table and range, and this is where I'm going to call in that function now. Now, Power Query didn't see do this one the way I wanted to because they also included a time so we don't want that. Let's change this. Press the shift key. This one select this column selected. Press the shift key. Select that one. Right click transform date only. We only want the date. I would have thought Power Query would have changed that particular step. Let's just delete that step because having unnecessary steps is probably not good. So I'm just gonna have these two selected. Right click and then transform date only. So it's not now only the two steps instead of three steps. What I want to do now is add another column to pull in that function. So we had that function here, right? So I want to pull in another column. Add column, custom column, and what we're going to do is pull in that function. Oh, I should have given it a better name, but let's just call it, ta we'll call it table one, because that was the name of that function. Open parentheses. Now remember that function had asked for two parameters, the start date and end date. So we have our start date, comma, and then our end date. Close parentheses, click OK. And now it pulled in another column, but it pulled in those tables for those filters based on my start and end date. Click on a blank space here, you'll see at the bottom here where it pulled all those from January 1st to February 1st, right? So now I can expand this it will expand everything maybe I don't need to use the column name as a prefix I'll uncheck that it will just add this custom word to everything else so it's a custom dot first name custom dot last name we don't want that so I'll click OK and now we have our columns that came out based on the filter here I'm gonna sort this by by ascending so it goes in a nice order and then remove these two columns. Select that, press the shift key, select that, right click, remove columns. And now we'll put this into my sheet. Go to home, click close and load, close and load to, let's load to, uh, let's load to this E1. So we want to load as a table into the worksheet. Let's pick E1 here. Click OK. And now we have our data. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to change that into a date. Let's see if we can go back, double click that, go back and make sure that is a date. Yes, it's only, it's seen as text. Change that to a date. And click close and load. And now it should be seen as dates here now. So if I wanted to change things here, go to start date 1-1, one, one. let's do something small, 1-3-2019. Press enter, right click, refresh. We, could, we should only have our three. This small two row table may get expanded to three rows. So sometimes what would happen is press tab and you see that little marker there. It's added another value, no value to this table. And if I right clicked and refreshed, you'll see that there's an error. So we need to go back there and change it and, and kind of compensate for that no or that empty space there. Uh, users might not know about that so we'll just double click this and and go back in to our source see it's picked up this null here so I'll use any of these rows or any of these headers here click that and just remove empty so it will remove the nulls there it was going to insert a second step there and that will take care of the error there if I go back to the bottom step here you can see it works click close and load and then let's change this to one and right click here refresh and that's taken care of sometimes this happens where press enter or tab and it just enters a second row there 
the solution for this ideally is just to move that row that range back to there so it takes care of it so we don't have to worry about it but just in case that happens having that null there filter will take out that error so if I change this back let's see if this works I change this to three press enter did it create one no it didn't create a record there right click here refresh it'll give me my three records here from January 1st to January 3rd. So that's the way that we can create a kind of basic interactive report just passing a start date and end date and getting that report from a table. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.